Like and subscribe right now, or you're gonna have terrible luck for the next week. Cats have nine lives. Or maybe not. The old wives tale probably originates from our feline friend's ability to always land on their feet. I mean, cats can withstand falls that would have otherwise been tragic, but they'll walk away from the fall without sustaining any serious wounds. But in today's video, we have an animal that literally has nine lives. Maybe even more. The animals we have for you can survive fatal incidences or accidents that would have otherwise been the end of the line for many other animals, especially for us humans. These are the 10 animals that can live after death. Number 10, freshwater turtles. Turtles cannot breathe underwater, yet they can stay submerged at the bottom of frozen lakes and ponds for more than half a year. These turtles have some neat party tricks that enable them to hibernate that long at the bottom of the freezing cold lake. First, they slow down their metabolic activities in order to maximize their body oxygen and support minimal needs until spring emerges. Second, these turtles are able to obtain some little oxygen from the frigid waters to accommodate their prolonged stay, especially in regions like southern Canada, where the winters are longer. Turtles like the loggerhead musk turtle, snapping turtle, and painted turtle can breathe in water through their butts. Well, it's it's called cloacal respiration, but you can imagine just how desperate they must be for oxygen at the time, since their ice-covered habitat won't let them get to the surface to take in fresh air. Come spring, you'll see these fellows emerging from hibernation as if they weren't trapped in the ice-cold watery tomb all winter long. Number 9. Flies. Ever seen David Blaine resurrect frozen flies and ask yourself how that was possible? Well, some flies can survive extremely low temperatures thanks to an antifreeze protein which they accumulate in their body. The common fruit fly, which David Blaine used, cannot withstand too harsh freezing conditions, but they do endure. The Antarctic midge, however, is so freeze tolerant it can survive temperatures way far below zero degrees Celsius. Basically, their antifreeze proteins prevent the formation of rock hard ice crystals in their bodies, which which are what kills most species who freeze out at sub-zero temperatures. Instead of freezing out, fries only remain cool to a point which the cells can tolerate. Thus, David Blaine's dead flies were merely in an inanimate state where they were supercooled, and holding the frozen fly in the hand long enough warms it up by body heat until the fly is fully thawed and it can fly again. But that's not the only kind of death these flies can survive. Female flies can go for several days after they've been decapitated. And amazingly, males will even try to seduce their zombified, headless damsels. You're probably thinking necrophilia. I'm thinking, these things just won't die. Number 8. Octopuses. Sushi is perhaps the most popular Japanese cuisine, mainly prepared with vinegared rice and raw seafood. Even in other parts of the world, it's not uncommon to find delicacies that are served raw. But food that is served alive? No, that's not common. You might have to take a flight to South Korea or Japan if you want to eat something that's very much alive and is trying to make its way out of your plate. The live octopus dish majorly consists of the tentacles which have been chopped from a live octopus and served raw with soy sauce. You would expect the arms to just sit on the plate in the arrangement your chef placed them, but you'll quickly learn that the arms aren't that eager to be eaten. Those who've eaten the dish will tell you that the food feels very much alive with the tentacles squirming around even when you start chewing them. But be warned, this is a deadly meal and numerous people have choked up on these chewy live tentacles. The reason why octopus's arms maintain mobility and continue reacting to stimuli even after being chopped off has to do with the fact that their central nervous system is located in its tentacles. It's quite fascinating because these movements can happen for up to a week after the arms have been severed, or should I say long after the octopus is dead. Number seven, salamanders. Salamanders can lose entire limbs and other complex structures in an otherwise deadly injury, but they'll regenerate the damaged tissues to the organs in a few weeks, and they'll live. Salamanders are not the only animals capable of such ability to regrow organs, but they exhibit remarkable organ regeneration capabilities comparatively. This led scientists to study salamanders to understand how we can cap their unique ability to benefit humans. We may soon be able to regenerate severed limbs. Number six, toads. Legally, a brain dead person is not considered to be alive. That is why in 2016, scientists were stumped by the headless toad found hopping around a forest in Connecticut. The Twitter famous faceless toad had a perfectly healthy looking body. It only misplaced its head and along with it, its brains. So here's a mindless frog minding its business and I'm not sure if it's aware of its surroundings. Well. 
thanks to the peculiar experiments of a 19th century neurologist who wanted to chop out its brain and see what the hell happens, we know that a brain-dead frog or toad could in fact register stimuli like a normal one with its brains in place. So frogs can swim, croak, and fight, brain or no brain. Number five, cockroaches. Here's another no-brainer. Well, probably because most people already know that roaches are believed to be one of the few creatures who are able to survive a nuclear strike. But did you know that cockroaches can go for days without their heads? Yeah, a headless cockroach can keep on living for about two weeks more. It's quite fascinating how these tenacious bugs can keep on living like that, whereas we humans cannot. The cockroach's open circulatory system has something to do with it. When the roach's head pops off, there is little blood pressure at the wound that's left. This means little bleeding and there will be enough time for clotting to take place. Also, cockroaches breathe through tiny holes called spiracles located on their body, so the head isn't needed for respiration to take place. However, unless the headless roach figures a way to eat or drink without their head, it'll starve and die eventually. Number four, chicken. Ever heard the phrase, run around like a headless chicken? Well, there's some truth to it, and any poultry farmer will tell you that when you chop off a chicken's head and let go of it immediately, it'll run around or fly about in a panicked frenzy, bumping in against everything and anything within the few seconds before their ultimate death. This could happen with other animals too, but larger animals bleed out faster, making such wild outbursts short-lived. A beheaded chicken, on the other hand, could likely keep on the display for more than an hour, perhaps even longer if the butcher's knife missed the mark and landed too high on the chicken's neck. Such a strike would sever the chicken's head, but leave part of the hen's brainstem intact, and that's all the hen needs to survive, head or no head. Such an incident occurred in 1945 Colorado when a poultry farmer, attempting to behead one of his chickens for dinner, missed the neck but chopped off most of the chicken's head, and luckily the chicken flew away. Instead of chasing after the chicken to finish the job, the farmer decided to spare it and chose to care for it. Today, we read of Mike, the headless chicken who lived for 18 months after his head was cut off. Number three. Jellyfish. If there's an animal in the world that we can say has drunk from the fabled fountain of youth, it's the species of jellyfish called Turritopsis dorni. These ocean-dwelling animals are now commonly being referred to as the immortal jellyfish due to their ability to revert to an earlier developmental stage of their lives and kind of start living life afresh. Typically, a new jellyfish life starts with the fertilization of an egg, which then grows into a larval stage, followed by a stage called the polyp colony, which eventually buds new jellyfish. The new jellyfishes live in two stages distinguished by their sexual maturity, with the fully formed jellyfish, called the medusa, being capable of sexual reproduction. Normally, the medusa reproduce and eventually die at the end of their natural life cycle, no more than a year since the larval stage. But for the Turritopsis dorni species, however, threats that should lead to death makes it age backward instead, reverting back to being a tiny bulb of tissue, which picks up from the youthful stage of their sexual immaturity. The most fascinating thing about this is that these jellyfishes can keep going back to their youth every time they age, over and over again. Now it's time for today's best pick. And in today's best pick, we have a picture sent to us by a subscriber just like you. It shows the head of a deadly snake severed and detached from its body, yet the snake seems to be on full attack mode. Well, let's find out more. Number two, snakes. If you're going to try and defend yourself from a snake by hitting it on the head, make sure you don't miss because the snake won't. And here's the tricky part. Snakes keep on living for a few minutes, even hours after their heads have been chopped off. Venomous snakes can still attack and lend you their deadly venomous fangs. This is possible because a snake's venom sac is located in its head, and with the brain intact, motor functions and other sensory organs can still work even if the rest of the body is detached. Most importantly, the snake's heat-sensitive pits will still be functional and they can detect your body heat signature should you try to pick up its chopped off head. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Number one, flatworms. The salamander's ability to regenerate whole limbs is pretty nifty, but how about a creature that can grow back an entire body from a tiny blob of tissue cut off from its body? Well, not all types of flatworms can regrow themselves, 
only the free-living flatworms commonly known as planarians are capable of regenerating their entire body if cut in half. And the most fascinating thing is that both separate pieces develop into fully formed planarians. You chop up one planarian, like how chefs cut up spring onions on the chopping board, and guess what? Each minuscule sliced up tissue of the flatworm begins to develop into a fully formed individual, each an exact copy of the original. Nottingham University scientists managed to create an entire colony of 20,000 flatworms from a single planarian. These things are truly the masters that can live after death. You made it to the end of the video, but hey, we'd love to see you again. If you click the subscribe and bell buttons, we'll always notify you when a fantastic video just like this one comes up. We'll have a lot more that you can enjoy. You can start by checking out the two already showing up on your screen right now. Keep it 100.